So what we have already done for a fold of this geometry similar exercise can be extended if the geometry of the fold is changed the underlying principle remains the same. For example, consider this fold geometry very idealized I understand and this fold geometry we can call it as an arrow head fold. Because it looks like an arrow. So, here if we want to find out how much is the shortening and those strain parameters how to proceed there can be two approaches one can be the line length balance and the second one can be the area balance. If it is line length balance I have to I can consider the pin line over here and over there and I have to calculate the length AB plus BC plus CD plus DE plus EF plus FG. This makes the total length of the layer before deformation. So, the length initial L0 or LI whatever we write is equal to AB plus BC plus CD plus DE plus EF plus FG and what is the final distance L final that is given by AB plus FG plus FB distance. So, since we know the initial length and the final length we can work out the strain parameters. Now, if we go for area balance method. How do we proceed? For area balance method either we take the two pin lines here or we may also take the pin lines over there and the distance between these two pin lines I will call as the LF and then this is the thickness of the layer before deformation because away from the fold we are getting undeformed layer. So, in the mental model we are doing this one now. This distance say it is capital R this distance is capital R this length is capital R and then the two pin lines are here before the deformation the initial condition and this is the final condition situation. So, this area has to be equal to the total area this area can be calculated we can break this area into an area of a triangle we can apply the formula and find out the area we can find out the area of this rectangle or square whatever it is there and then say so this area is capital a final then a final is equal to r multiplied by this distance it is a similar process what we have done already. Say so, this distance is length initial r multiplied by length initial. So, a f is known from the diagram r I am getting from the diagram. So, l i can be calculated. So, the L final is known from the given diagram L initial has been worked out. So, from the known L initial and L final we will find out shortening, shortening percentage etcetera it is possible to do. Now, after the arrowhead fold any or many other fold geometries can be worked out for example, if it is a box fold in that case how, how do we proceed if we go by the line length balance I can take the pin lines over here 
and this distance is a length final. What is the length initial? I can again write A, B, C, D, E, F and the length initial is given by A, B plus C, D plus B, C plus D, E plus E, F. Since L, I and L, F are known, the strain parameters can be calculated. If I go by the area balance method, what to do? I have to find out the area of this rectangle or square, whatever is given, say it is A final, then A final is equal to the L initial, the distance between the two pin lines multiplied by this distance R. So from there, L i can be obtained. Once L i is known, the distance between the two pin lines before deformation and the L final is known, the distance between the two pin lines after deformation from these two we can find out the strain parameter. So, the fold geometry may change, the process remains essentially the same. And just as a continuation, if I take another fold geometry like this, we can call this geometry of the fold as a kink fold because it has straight limb and sharp hinge. Then again for line length balance can be done or the area balance can be done and the strain parameters can be obtained. Where should I take the pin lines? In this case, I can take the pin lines here for the line length balance method. And for the area balance also, these two can be taken and similarly, the work can be done. Now, let us see a situation where a reverse fault is given and we are finding out the strain parameters. Cross section balancing will be applied here. The reverse fault here is of a different type. In this case, the reverse fault is of step geometry, where the nearly horizontal portion is can be called as a flat. So, this portion is also called a flat and the inclined one with the horizontal can be called as a ramp. So, together it can be called as a flat ramp, flat geometry of fault. Okay. Now, I will draw this. Think that this is a very rigid piece of material, say wood. And here, I have kept soft deformable material. What is this? This is soft deformable material and think that we have kept this touching a wall. So, this is a rigid wall over which I have touched this wood and I am also considering the base also to be rigid. Now, if I give a push of this portion of the soft deformable material by a piston, typically this is done in analog model in the laboratory, maintaining the geometric, dynamic and kinematic similarity. In this case, what happens? This soft deformable material which can be clay, plasticine or chocolate or bouncing putty or silicon putty will start climbing this ramp. So, whereas this wood will remain static, this wood is not going to move anywhere and neither it will undergo any internal deformation because it is a rigid material. So, this material will start moving up, there will be a relative movement that will start, this soft material will push and move. So, this is the half arrow relative movement and it will also climb up the ramp. So, there are the half arrows. After it climbs up and reaches this flat over here, then also due to continuous movement of the piston, the material will move. So, in future after this material has come over there, there will be another relative sense of movement in that way. So, how it will look like?
after some deformation this would be the situation this yellow line was initially here and it has moved from this place to that place and I put again the half arrows this is going to happen. So, in effect due to such a reverse faulting through flat ramp flat geometry a fold is created within the hanging wall block. Where is the hanging wall block here? This is the hanging wall block and this wood rigid material is the foot wall block. Now suppose this geometry is known to me by geological field work finally a cross section has been made and in the cross section we are getting such a situation then can we find out the shortening and the shortening percentage and other strain parameters that is the question. So, a few ideal situation has been maintained in the drawing what have been maintained I have considered that these two lines are mutually parallel these two are also parallel to this line these three are also parallel to this line. I have also considered for the sake of simplicity that this yellow line is vertical. We will first learn the ideal situations then yourself you yourself can understand what will happen if these situations are not maintained if they are non parallel what will happen what will happen if this yellow line is not perpendicular on this orange line. So, for this situation this is our final deformation the prototype and we can make a mental model initial where what I actually drew there I am going to draw once again here. This is our mental model that the situation was like this and after deformation this has happened. Now if this is so we assume first a constant area deformation. As I told previously in the real geological problems that you are handling you cannot also consider constant area deformation and proceed like what I am going to do. For that also you have to prove in the field that there has been constant volume situation, no partial melting happened, no melt came from outside, no diagenesis happened and no metamorphism happened during deformation. These have to be established during or after deformation. These have to be established then only you can apply such process. Now to proceed we want to find out how much is this area call it a final it is a trapezoid as per my diagram but it can have any other geometry and we know the formula of finding out the area if it is of regular geometry here it is a trapezoid we can break this trapezoid into two right angle triangle and a rectangle and piece by piece we can calculate the area and sum up to get AF or if it is of irregular geometry then also find out the area. So, anyway AF area is calculated for here from where this area has come this area must have come due to this push. So, say this line is AB and after deformation it came here A dash B dash there is an area loss here at the cost of what there has been some area gain. So, if we find the AF and look at here this distance let us say it is capital R and A dash A distance is equal to S then the area of rectangle A dash A B B dash A dash A B B dash is equal to S multiplied by capital R. So, I can say A F is equal to F as a subscript 
is equal to S multiplied by R. From the cross section which has been produced by field work studies, AF can be calculated and the R over here can also be calculated. So once these two are done, we find S that is the actual movement of line AB to A dash B dash. This is our S distance, A dash A is the S distance. Once the S distance is found, I can write S distance is like our delta L change in the length, shortening and as a negative number. I can write whatever comes up, few centimeter in the drawing, I can call it minus say 3.2 centimeter as delta L. So once S as A dash A is found out, I can draw the two pin lines over here and these two pin lines are before deformation. So this is my length initial and if I draw another pin line over here, this distance is my length final. So from the length initial and length final, we can work out the strain parameters. What is the relation between length initial, length final and S? As per the diagram, length final plus S is equal to length initial. Length final plus S is equal to length initial. So S was worked out from this exercise. So I said S is worked out and we have also seen the length final distance from here. From the given diagram, we can construct, find out this distance LF. So LF is known. So from there, we can work out the L initial. So now from these two parameters, shortening can be calculated. So I have given you an example where a flat ramp, flat geometry and one block is riding over the other block. As a continuation of this problem, one can also think in terms of a more complicated geometry which has been worked out by cross section studies. It looks like this. So what has happened basically we are observing a stacking pattern of the fault related folds. This faulting and here is a ramp geometry but then this line which is plane in three dimension also has acted as a another reverse fault. There has been also another slip here. So in this case how much is the shortening? and shortening percentage can be worked out in the same way this problem was solved. I will lead, leave this up to the viewer to draw such a diagram in your copy and from there try to solve the find out the SH and the SH percentage values. So we have seen when there is a flat ramp and flat geometry and the hanging wall material block moves up leading to this kind of folded material in the hanging wall block in a reverse fall situation, how the cross section balancing has been done and how the strain and parameters have been deduced. A much similar to this can be a second situation here. What is the basic difference between this diagram and that diagram? In this case, we can see that there is a straight line segment of the fault and there is sharp angular portions, whereas here the fault plane is smooth. It is horizontal here locally, then it is inclined smoothly moving from horizontal to the incline and then again it becomes horizontal over here. So in this case and similar to the previous case, if you are pushing the soft deformable material over here and imagine this is a hard material, in that case the soft material will climb over the hard material leading to reverse faults. What is the basic difference between these two? In this case there was sharp fold with sharp hinge with fold with sharp boundary lines were found here whereas here it will be a dome shaped geometry an antiform this one is also an antiform but here it is round geometry so it has been said by some geologists that the geometry of this fold or that fold basically depends on 
the geometry of the fault plane when it is sharp and angular contacts then this kind of geometry and when it is smooth fault plane alternating from horizontal to incline to horizontal in that case this kind of doming happens however this has also been questioned by some structural geologists anyway here our concern is how do we do the strain analysis from such a geometry so what has to be done basically you have to draw this line and find out this irregular area how to do that you have to keep on drawing equidistant lines which are perpendicular on this green line and then you find out the area a and following the similar process of this one you can find out finally the shortening and the shortening percent i would request the viewers to draw such a diagram in your copy where this line is horizontal this segment of the line is horizontal this segment of yellow line is horizontal so also this segment and then you put a draw a free hand curve then you draw an irregular geometry over here by another color pen and draw it and then following the similar process find out shortening and shortening percentage from this figure so just like we did with the reverse fault and the strain analysis through cross section balancing what if what a least strict normal fault so i have drawn a case where this yellow bounded material was at one time joined in the left hand side and now it has opened up so it is not a strictly speaking normal fault also there is also opening across the brittle plane in this situation how much is the any of these strain parameters first to admit we are dealing with a very ideal situation in reality the situation can be more complicated there can be secondary shears developed the riddle shear which will make this situation more complicated anyway we learn first the easy things and we can keep on always thinking how to improve the ideal situation so some assumptions have been made here this portion of the line this line is considered parallel to that line this line is also considered parallel to this line these three are also parallel to this and these two by the way if i join it comes within a single straight line okay so we, as we see there has been an opening we understand there must have been an extension in the past tectonic extension leading to opening up and when this opening up happen i can understand that this yellow bound material has moved in this way leading to a slip okay now to proceed to find out the strain parameters our first job will be to find out this area say this area is a final and we will now create a mental model of the initial situation this is the final situation with the prototype what was the initial situation now this material must have been here so it was could have been like this and in the mental model we think that this yellow material has moved to the right hand side leading to a faulting and that has produced this final disposition okay how to find out the area of this irregular geometry so if i tell you very briefly i can basically redraw this portion how to find out the area i can draw a straight line inside 
give it a name AB, then I have to draw lines which are perpendicular to AB and which are equidistant like this and find out the average height H average then H average multiplied by the AB length will give me the area AF which I am talking here. Now further in this mental model we will think that this material was pulled. So this line AB moved here as A dash B dash and this geometry was produced. So here I told you these two lines are parallel. So here I will think how much is the area of this rectangle. The area A initial will be given by A A dash multiplied by A dash B dash A A dash multiplied by A dash B dash. This A dash B dash height say it is capital R which is here also visible capital R which is here one can find out from the given diagram how much is the R value. So A dash B dash as R is already known. Now assuming that there is no area loss or no area gain or in other words there is area conservation during deformation I can say that as this material has been pulled in this direction from the initial position, this is the initial position and you have pulled this block over there, there is a vacant area created and that vacant area must be equal to the area of A, A dash, B dash and B. So therefore, this equation holds true. So therefore, we can say that the A final is equal to A initial. So, the AF which can be calculated from the diagram is equal to AA dash multiplied by A dash B dash we are calling as R. Now R is known from the given diagram and AA dash then can be worked out. this distance can be worked out. This is the amount of extension that has happened due to such a deformation. So this actually can be called as the change in length delta L. Now we have to think of the pin lines. We can think here in the given diagram, here is one pin line and here is the other pin line. So this distance is our length final and what is the length initial? before the pin line actually pin lines moved. So here keep this pin line as static think that this material is brought back here. So this becomes the other pin line. So this distance is the this is the length initial. Now what is the relationship between LF, LI and delta L? We can see from the diagram LF minus delta L is equal to L initial. So once we have known the LF and the LI, we can find out the strain parameter. So in this way, such a problem can be solved.